Hi, Carol here. A great big warm welcome to my craft room. Well, we're going to be using MFT Peekaboo window die first, and I left the numbers for you if you're interested. And the Lawn Fawn Puffy Cloud Borders, love this. Uh, Lawn Fawns uh, right here, we're going to be using this slider. It's called Slide On Over, and I left you the information if you want to stop the video. And this is the ultimate cutesy wootsy set by Inky Antics. Love it. And that's where I'm going to be focusing. The border die I'm going to be using by MFT. That's the wonky stitch die. And also the long dies that don't cut out, but they leave four different style stitches there by Lawn Fawn. I didn't have the name. I happened to cut it off. <laughs> and this is actually going to be an A2 size card. And, uh, and it is one of my clean and simple cards, but in one of my longer version clean and simple cards. It is clean. It is quite simple if you want to replicate it, but it has a ton of wonderful techniques I wanted to share with you. Thus, the long, long video. I think I may go down the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest card video tutorial. <laughs> But anyway, I kept it in. I cut out um, a piece of cardstock with that MFT die, the window die. I love it because it has a lot of stitches around it. I used the largest wonky stitch die to cut that out because it will seat on my A2 size five and a quarter by five, five and a half by four and a quarter. We all know that in A2 size. And this uh, die here cuts out but see those two little lines top and bottom at the top there you don't want to cut along there because it will cut so you want to put the die and your cardstock at the very tip of your um, die cutting machine and you want to keep that little piece I just set in there so set that aside so you know where it is because you are going to glue that back on now um, this, I think I got at MFT for $60 order. They sent you that. I, I couldn't find it uh, in there, but isn't it wonderful how they have other ones, but this particular one says friend. I like the way it cuts and leaves it on there. You still have that tiny little line at the top, and you could put it in the middle of your card, the bottom of your card, wherever. I love these Lawn Fawn border dies. You get four of them that just embed the actual um, decoration you know the stitch they have four different style stitches so I picked one out and I went along all the sides of the right hand side of my card here and made stitches because most of the card you know you have the wonky stitch die so you have those wonky stitches you have the window and it has beautiful double stitches and it's like cross uh, cornered stitched as well and I just loved opening it up and having stitches on the inside of your card so this Lawn Fawn set I think is a must-have for your stash just for adding little wee something somethings to your card once I ran that through the die cutting machine I'm going to take the uh, puffy cloud die here for my heels in the background behind the window you're also going to cut out a piece of acetate just under the size of this panel and that's going to be later on in the video. So I took this puffy one out and then the slide on over slider for the little mouse to be seated on here is going to go right at the bottom. So I want to make sure I had enough space on top of the puffiness of the heels. So I grabbed a different one that wasn't so uh, up and down, up and down, you know what I mean? It was uh, just had a few little bumps on the top there. <laughs> so here we go. I took a piece of long card stock because it's going behind the window. Left about two inches on the bottom. I apologize for not raising it up. And I'm going to cut that out and then position the slider underneath and cut it out. Next, I'm going to take Catherine Pooler's new inks in the Black Archival, nice and juicy, and I'm going to put down the little mouse. I kind of rubbed on the photopolymer stamp there because I have not used this Inky Antics stamp set at all. And I like it because it has a bump up 
uh, portion that you're going to use to emboss it and I call it dry embossing I've done it to many cards and I'm just going to show you how you can take uh, this little girl and the teddy bear and bump up or emboss um, dry emboss the teddy bear the, the uh, hair and make it just really puffy and give you a 3d look on your card that truly is amazing I just love that technique I love using it on cards and it's so crazy easy so I'm going to show you that later on and I always stamp out two of everything because I like to have a pattern beside me that I can practice on just to show me which colors I want to use. And I kept all the Copic coloring together. I grabbed the C1, the C2, and the C4 for the little mouse. Such a cute little uh, image, but it is small and it takes you no time at all. I think it's really cute. And that's the only image I'm using for this slider card which is really unusual. And this card, actually, I kept the clean and simple portion on the front. And then when you flip the card open, that is going to be my main work, will be on the inside of the card. I used RV02, the red violet. It's so pretty. It's very light. And then I took another, uh, I tried to stay in the families there of the RVs. I used an 04 and add some shading, just a cute little um, image. And then I'm going to fussy cut them because they don't come with a die. Now I'm just going to take a Copic in a light, light blue. That's all you need for the background because uh, the one I cut the tail off, as you can see, because it's going to sit on the ledge of a window. Yeah, it didn't matter what I did here. I could not get this blue marker number. On there I think it's a 4-1 but I don't want to say for certain and then I take the black 100 go around all the images that I fussy cut or die cut I don't like to see any of the white card stock on the sides so that's just an easy way to uh, remedy that situation now moving along this is the E family the 0 0 I start out with my light source will be coming from the center so I leave it open for now and there's very little skin that you have to worry about the hands the feet the face so this is a beautiful simplistic learn as you go if you want to do skin and if you stay in the E family here's the E4 one this is a nice light color and then I'll grab another E uh, with three zeros and fill in the center. Then I'll go back to the E2 and make it darker around the edges. And now the E93, sorry it's upside down. <laughs> and you're going to go around all of it. The E34 is nice because it has that kind of uh, caramel look. You're going to back up to the double zero, the E00, zero zero, and go over that, add a darker shade on the inside, um, wherever you think shade is going to be, obviously under the hair and under clothing. The E70, I grabbed that because it had a little bit of orange in it, and then I'll begin the hair. So take your lightest yellow uh, Copic marker. I start off leaving the space in the center. And then I took uh, kind of like a caramel and an orange. There's the caramel that comes up. Trying to keep that center portion clear. And then I go to back to the yellow, making it nice and bright. I add a deeper orange right here. Uh, y family and, you know, just orange and uh, caramel. And now I'm going to go in and shade around the edges. I take my Copic Multiliner next. And that really helps you with the part on the top. And, oh, I guess I didn't do it here. I went jumped right over to the bear. <laughs> so take a light brown. I started off with just a light brown um, color. And I'm practicing on the right. And I liked it, so I stuck with that. And then I'll go back after I make the decision, you know, to stay with that color. And I just take care of all of it on the bear which is so cute, isn't it? And that's when I wanted to go in with a Prismacolor 
because what is really nice using Gamsol is you can pull the color of the wax down into the bear and give it that little shine so it stands out. And once you bump it out with uh, your dry embossing, when you use your stylus, it is really cute. So I'm going just around all the edges and uh, you know, leaving a little bit in the center of the bear on the bear's back there, the back of his back, and on the legs, and just grab a dark brown. And then when you have an image beside you, you can kind of test out what colors you think will work. And here I loved this cranberry red to add to the brown, so I did that. Orange is nice to uh, put into brown if you want to have a really pop up uh, bit of kissed sunlight. And I added a nice skin tone to the face and to the hair. I'm going back with one lighter shade of brown than the original shade that we put down. After we get this in and I just go around the underneath part of where we put the dark brown, I'm going to grab my Gamsol, dip it into the stump and just move it around leaving the inside of the open area there where I'm going to color it with some really nice bright yellow and doesn't that look nice? It really pushes everything together on top of the Copic coloring when you use the Prisma pencils. Then I grab my 0 .05 Copic Multiliner and I'm going to go through and I'm going to actually outline all of the image. Right here I'm going to flick the part so that it's just uh, more vivid to look at and you can see some individual hairs in here. I pretty well do this to all stamped images. I think it looks you know, nice when you pop it out. I knew I had to fussy cut this, so I'm going to add some more uh, dark lines and kind of lift my hand up where I'm adding the part line so it's nice and fine. And uh, here's where I go back in with a bright, bright yellow. Instead of using a zero marker, I always use the lightest color that I'm using actually in the particular image I'm going to be coloring and thus the yellow and I just touch it just to add some um, highlights and it was nice and juicy so I'm going over the images the hair wherever I think I want to add just a little bit more the two little bows and the smile the eyes the little eyebrows and here's the uh, zero <clears throat> point zero five excuse me I'm sorry now for the little pajamas. They're so sweet. So I had to decide what other color I was going to add to the inside of the card. That would be a featured color and I thought pink would be awesome. I mean little girl, little pink pajamas. The stripes I added a light pink and then just pick a nice vibrant a darker pink to go on the stripe lines. And I take my white uh, gel marker, you know, the white pen, and then I add little polka dots to the uh, pajamas and that makes them just pop right off there. So cute. I like to outline when I've already added the color so that I don't contaminate the marker going back in after, even though it's archival, I just like to lay the color and then I go back in and I'll add all the nice features with the multi-liner and uh, I just wanted this to pop off the page as uh, because I am going to dry emboss the teddy bear and her hair so that just makes it rise up from the image and just adds that extra pop to any card especially if you have you know something where you want it to uh, be more prominent when you have an image and I think the teddy bear is perfect for this. So I'll continue to go around the image with the 0 .05 multi-liner around the hair and um, yeah wherever I think it needs to be uh, more prominent I'll add more ink. Once the dark pink is applied I'm going to take my Sakura pen, add the glitter, take my white gel pen 
add some dots to it on the pajama and really really cute the sakura pen is wondrously sparkly like really glittery and i love this gel pen it makes the smallest little dots ever and yet it adds that wow factor and i think she's very cute and later on we are going to do the dry embossing and uh, yeah she ended up being really nice i used the sakura pen and i dot the little flowers with the white gel pen and off we go to the next uh yeah we're going to head into finishing the portion that's going to have the little mouse on it and um, the slider portion so we're going to get the oxide inks of course these are the most beautiful blending inks i've ever worked with and on this 140 pound cardstock that i buy from the stationery here it glides so I take the cracked pistachio, I think it is, and then I go to the deep green and the, um, I think I had a little bit of the gray in there as well. I'm not sure. I'm just looking at it just to grab the corners with this, uh, like an old olive. I don't have them right here where I'm editing, so I didn't write down the colors, but I think there's two greens in this set and I use both of them. And then I'm going to add some little pencil marks of grass, like blades of grass. And they blend like butter. I've never seen anything like it. The most beautiful, rich look imaginable are these inks. Just wonderful. I take my Prisma pencils, I grab the olive color, the bright green, the yellow, and I just go crazy adding just little grass lines. And... Um, I wanted this to be different from the outside of the card, which you will see. We're only going to color that, but uh, I add some water to it. I take a damp cloth, press it down, and we're going to move along to the dry embossing. So here you go. With this set in Inky Attics comes the bump up set, and it has cut out, um, it's like a... Uh, it, you're like embossing it and it has the images already right there you just put it over top and you're going to take your stylus and on the small side and you're going to go around and press the image i apologize for being too close uh focused i didn't even notice the camera but you're going to take the image and this bump up set has all the places uh taken out and every place that you want to add the image and bump it up or dry emboss it as i call it you can just place it this is the top portion uh there you go i, I wish you could see this the hair in real life i think that's why i had the camera so close it pops it right out and they say it bumps it out but oh my and here's the top portion of the little bear the back of the head so you just keep running your stylus across it numerous times and it bumps it right up. Look at that. Just gorgeous. I love this set. And then you can go across here. I kind of knew where the image was. So I just went in and anywhere you want to add that, this bump up set didn't have this portion. So I just went along with the stylus myself and I just felt it to see how far it was popped out. I wanted the bottom of the feet popped up and I took the stylus. That's a Stampin' Up! Uh, foam pad. I did the mouse in the same way with the smaller portion of the stylus. Oh my, so crazy 3D looking and it just really does something extra for your image. Now I'm going to move on to the friend that I die cut twice and I'm going to do dark at the top and transition down to the light. So just take whatever colors you want to work with. This is the inside of the card. So I'm working with the pinks. Like remember the pajamas there? I did it in pink knowing that I'm going to transition to the pink with the very light greens on the inside. That's kind of like my uh, go-to card like blue green on the front 
and some pink and green on the inside as a major color. I'll cut the bottom off so that I can take these letters out individually. And then I'm going to go around the edges with the middle, I guess the mid-tone um, marker. And then I'm going to apply my uh, Pico embellisher in the clear. It's kind of like a light, lighter version of glossy accents. And I only apply it to where I put, oh, hello, where I put the dark tones on the letters. So I put the Pico embellisher just on the dark tones. Okay, so now I have to think about the element for the front of the card. And now I'm just going to add some little hills because I'm going to add the same uh, inks, the oxide inks, to the bottom half in the greens to run it across. And then I'm going to do the sky and some clouds and I'm actually going to dry emboss the clouds. And just show you a few things that I like to do when I do a sky. Okay, time for a break. <laughs> You're probably uh, tired of watching, so it's it's a short break, and we'll carry on. On the little girl here, I'm going to add the Pico embellisher to the little bear, and I prefer this over glossy accents. One reason it dries really fast, and it's a light layer. You don't get uh, more. It's not so plastic looking as the glossy accents it's just uh, there which is really nice it, I like the clear it comes in sparkle and clear so I do go through the clear quite rapidly <laughs> now I'm going to grab those letters bring them back and use the Pico clear embellisher for just the top portion where the dark transitions down and that really does add an out a wow factor because you really notice the Pico embellisher give that shine, but yet, hello, yet you have the bottom light portion, which looks nice and flat, and it, it really is a nice effect. Then I grab my masking t uh, paper, which I buy in bulk uh, at the stationery store, and it's made by Post-it. And I cut out two pieces that kind of like mimic the shape we put down there so I can transition over from the back portion. I take my uh, pistachio here with a light hand because I want the sky to have that little bit of green in the background. And then we will add iced spruce, which is this one here. I think that's the name. That just adds to the cracked pistachio, doesn't it? It's beautiful. And I also cut out three clouds by hand. Just some little poofy clouds, small, medium, and large, larger. And I put them on there. And then I'm going to go over it with the pink, the worn lipstick, just to give the sky that little something, you know, extra something. And uh, so you could see it mainly below the clouds. I push up and then I add the faded jeans for the blue. And with the worn lipstick, I want to say that I take my applicator and I push up into the clouds to get that little pink effect. Like, like you know, it's shiny. Oh, I'm showing it here. I'm pushing it up towards the mask. And it's really pretty when you take it, the mask off. You will see it just adds that little touch of transition. And then we're going to go ahead and do the dry embossing. You want to keep it for the back. All you do is flip it over and you will know exactly where you to position it. And uh, another thing you can do right here is take your stylus and go over the edges. So when you turn it back and you take your mat, which is this Stampin' Up um, foam mat, you can see where you have to go. I press it down really hard and you can use the large ball on your stylus or the small one. And the effect when you go up and down, up and down, up and out, down, gives the dimension uh, to the clouds like uh, that really does stand off the page. Do you like that? Up and down, up and down. <laughs> yes, but it does. It just adds that poofy cloud effect. And then you have that pink underneath that just shines. 
and then just keep going back and I'm going to share something that will help you uh, when you um, to keep that poof that 3D look. Now, I looked over um, my desk and on the island and I saw this die that said friends just this little font die you can see I just shoved it over there to the left and in the guts part it looked like uh, raindrops so I just sprinkled some water off to the right side dipped it down because you know the oxide inks react to water and then it'll spread just a little bit and it'll give the illusion of having actual raindrop looks and so I did that all the way across the top and then I will add those little wee gut pieces from the word friends that's why for uh, I don't throw things out for a little bit you know that I think I might use and it was the friends die without the guts out and I looked over and saw it and I thought they look just like raindrops Isn't that crazy so then I add those and then I put some Pico Clear embellisher on top so that it looked like rain. I added a little bit to the spots that we used the water to uh, take up the uh, oxide inks. Then I sprayed it with a little bit of uh, water again and then spray the back. Pat it down and go over it with your stylus and heat set it and on the front. Don't heat set the back. Heat set the front and I'm that will shrink it and it will allow it to stay puffed up like that even I when you send it through the mail I've had people tell me that the card still looked 3D so then I'll take it and I will heat set the front and the back I guess I do go over the back and um, yeah it just stayed like that now your next stamp set makes a stamp that has furniture it's called window play I love it it comes with the dies the couch the window two window dies pillows on the couch so many cutesy wootsy things it has the lamp the Tiffany lamp oh wonderful I grab the misty and I start arranging some furniture right above that friend we're not going to use that friend, but I kept it on there so I had some stability. And I put the window, the end table, the couch off to the left. And I want to make sure that uh, you want to do your lamp afterwards so that it will be seated down farther. Because if you put it down now, it's going to be raised up because on the actual engraved portion on the other side, it doesn't start to a little way up. And I figured that one out. <laughs> This window play stamp set and die is so nice to have on hand. Sometimes you have images and it's nice to add a background to it like this uh, actual card. And what nicer uh, stamp set and die to have than, you know, to have a window, a lamp, an end table, a couch. So many possibilities with this. I ink up the couch again on my white card stock. And wouldn't you know I get a perfect a perfect image. <laughs> I didn't even have a block or the misty. I just put it down there. All I want to do is color in the pillows. I want to just take a minute as I'm coloring this in with three tones of the Prisma pencils. I think it adds a nice softness to the pillows. Then we're going to put the Pico embellisher on it when we're finished cut them out and we are again going to do the dry embossing or the bump up or whatever you want to call bringing some 3D look to this and I want to take a second just here to thank you always for watching and supporting my tutorials and um, I, I'm really grateful for that and I, I like to let you know that I appreciate my subscribers and um, hitting 10,000 is a huge milestone so I want to do some little extra things just to give back for uh, giving me the pleasure of you viewing my tutorials and for your beautiful comments they mean so much to me they will just brighten my day uh, you have no idea so um, I appreciate that and here I'm going to go over these teensy eensy little wee pillows <laughs> once again with the 100 Copic marker going around them and I think detail really adds don't you think to a card it's that one little extra thing 
that we try and do to show others that we appreciate them by the way we design our cards. And uh, we take a lot of time to do it, uh, designing a card. Even the smallest card is a labor of love. So um, I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> That's how I feel. I just wanted to express to you how I feel. And uh, I really have made some wonderful friends through um, YouTube, and I appreciate that. Now, this is the funny story that I had to tell you about this little bottle. This is in the set, by the way, a little wee glass with a straw in it. And I was drinking my Coke with a straw, and I thought, are you kidding? <laughs> of course, my Coca-Cola. So I added two little um, brown tones, and then I took a lighter tone and added some dots so it looked like it was little sparkles. And there's the browns that I use for the... Um, end table and I do the knob in white so it looks like a little enamel knob and is that not cute it was really funny to look at the stamp set because it's the first time I've used this inky antics stamp set and uh, have my glass because I freeze my glasses in the freezer so that I can have a nice cold uh, coca-cola guess this card was meant to be right <laughs> So now I'm putting the glow around the Tiffany lamp so that when I use the background Copic marker to add um, my background, it's going to have that glow coming off of the lamp. I add my C2 Copic markers so that it can rest and I can see how it's going to dry before I add all the tones to it to make it look like a glass window. And now I found this beautiful foiled paper. Is that not gorgeous? Just one piece. I don't know what set it's from, but it was in my 6x6 stash. It looked vintage. How sweet is that? And we're going to bump up the back of the couch because you know how those antique couches have that poof on your back? And then we're going to add pillows and stitching in the pillows. Yes, with this one little stamp. Can you believe it? So I'm cutting around. I put that little wee round pillow in uh, on the couch to the right side. I already put some double-sided tape to pop it up so that I can get this situated underneath. Then I'll add the other pillows. So I have the bottom portion. The top portion I'm going to dry emboss so it just comes out. Oh, I just love the inside of this little card. It's so sweet. And now I'm going to um, put some ink on here and I'm going to do this once again. I wasn't sure um, if I needed to have an extra one so I wanted to put the paper away so I cut this out and then I'm going to move forward for the pillows. Now I didn't have cardstock to match, match it and I wanted it to look like the foiled rose there. So I just took three tone, no two, the gray and the pink, mixed them together, a little bit of violet, and look what I came up with, the perfect tone for the couch. I stamped it out and I only want that little wee piece of uh, cushion on there. And I'll show you what I do with that. I add stitching to the middle part and it's the stitching that matches the outside edge of the card and it looks like the pillows were stitched together and that's the effect I think that the designer had with adding the center lines. After I cut that out I'm going to go around the edges of course with the 100 marker, the black, and then I'm going to grab that stitched set with the four different uh, stitching elements that just put the stitches into whatever object you want to um, um, add through your machine. I'm going to go over it with my 0.05 Copic multi-liner so it stands out. I really like these Lawn Fawn sets to add stitching to anything. Not only the outside borders of your cards, but look at I'm able to make it look like the pillows were stitched together. I think that's so cute. And I just ran it across there and put some of my tape to hold it. On the cardstock, I love that medical, the Mylor, Mylor, I think it is, medical tape. 
and uh, bring it back and so crazy cute it looks like little wee stitches I keep saying we I don't know why that is a word I always use my friends always say that is your word <laughs> Canadians must use we all the time instead of small and I'm noticing that's what I'm doing so I'll try not to do it um, okay so here we go I added the pillows to the couch I'm going around the edges of the back of the couch because I'm going to uh, take it and dry emboss it or bump it up with the Stampin' Up! Um, that foam board, that foam piece there. And then um, once I do that, I'm going to add the bottom. And this is that fabric tape I got at Michael's. It's called Tulip. $2.48. It dries matte and it has a detailed tip and it watch for it in the sewing section two dollars and 49 or 48 cents crazy and it's wonderful it does dry matte and it dries really well so I'm really glad I picked those I got two bottles in my last haul remember and I do love it so here I cut it off the, the end of the couch I'm adding my pillows so they pop up I have to uh, yeah situate it there and um, then I have to always keep in mind that I'm cutting along the top of the friend so I, I have to make sure I shade under the couch and on the floor. Now I put it on top of the foam piece. I take the Martha Stewart, uh, and it's not embossing but your stylus, on the big side, the big ball side and I just pushed it into the cardstock and I think it just looks so sweet and it'll stay poofed out like that because I'm adding the double-sided uh, foam tape and then I set it snug under the pillows that I popped up and I'm really happy now that I have a little bit of vintage vintage in my clean and simple card the couch isn't that sweet I wanted to show you here um, how I'm just making sure I have the window ledges nice and black with my Copic Multiliner. So I grabbed a ruler to make it straight. And then I'm going to add that little, uh, you remember from my painting, that small, I'm not using the word we, that small locked uh, mechanism on the window. I thought that added to it. And I'm going over it with this uh, light. It's kind of like chip or the pistachio. Uh, I wanted to match up the front of the card like the pistachio oxide inks so the Copic had the perfect match so that was fabulous and then I add my little mouse and remember we bumped him up as well the dry emboss I add his little tail that I cut off going right there is that not cute a jaggedy little mouse tail I'm adding his two little legs on there darkening them up and it looks like he's just walking across the ledge and then we're going to move forward with the pico embellisher making sure everything just has a shine where it should shine on the pillows and now I will cut off friend I added some light gray to the bottom like a C I think I used C1 on that one just waiting for it to dry and then I took my uh, distress tool. I'm going over the edges. I had to distress a little bit. I know. Clean and simple card, yet I'm distressing the inside. I just couldn't help it. Let's add to the back of the little girl because we bumped it up on the teddy bear and her hair. And now it's going to stay that way with the tape. We'll put her on. Then we're going to move along to uh, do the friend portion. Um, uh, oh yes, the frame. Just two, um, yeah, the phone rang. I'm so sorry. Can you believe that? The phone is right there, but I had to show you that you want to add the same green that we put on the background of the little girl, the couch, and that I'm going to add to the back of the pink. I want it to have that little shade so it all kind of matchy matchy, right? So I'll go across this and I'll add the green. And then we're going to glue down the pink for friend. And then I get rid of the phone. Isn't that crazy? I can't believe I didn't look up and see that in the tutorial. So there you have it. We are going to add 
raindrops and I am actually using the zero Copic marker. If you press the marker down and then flick up, you will get that narrow raindrop look, which is really cute. And the way I get it to look like um, that it's glass is the right pane, I'll put an almond shape with a lighter color of gray. The bottom, I will put two mountains like that. And uh, really what it is, it's the background we colored in and then I took the darker gray and just went over the edges, the bottom pane like an M underneath the uh, black line. And on the top, you'll see that it's an almond shape that I get on the right pane because your little wee mouse is there. Now guess what happened? The card wouldn't close, so I had to make, um, I had to cut it in half and add this to it. So you want, I took one inch and then I took my Martha Stewart score tool and then I scored the gusset in the middle so that it would be like a book. And I took my Teflon bone folder, creased it, and then we're going to add it to the card again. We're gonna add the front and the back to this here uh, piece. So crease it nice. Uh, just an eighth of an inch. You're going to need just one um, uh, gully in your um, Martha Stewart board there. Just go over one and you'll have the perfect one eighth. Add some double sided tape and then we're going to put it back together again. You know when I went to close it, the crazy thing wouldn't close and I thought, oh no, I forgot to add a gusset. Of course I'm going to need it because we had so many elements on the inside piece. When I had to put double-sided tape to put it down, you know, all the elements down, I did need a gusset. So, so easy peasy. Cut out the 140 pounds, same white cardstock, and I just put it in the Martha Stewart scoreboard, scored it with a little uh, gusset of an eighth of an inch in the center, creased it out, added double-sided tape, and now I'll apply the front and the back of the card. Easy peasy and it does look more aesthetically pleasing when you do something like this to a thick card. That way if somebody wants to showcase it on their bureau they can open it up and it won't constantly be falling because it won't close right. Um, even in the mail it's kind of nice to have this. It just adds to it just that little one eighth of an inch. Um, is nice. So now we're going to put everything together. This is the fun part. I can't wait. I'm going to just cut the little pieces off the bottom and the top to make sure it was even. And now we're going to apply our pink friend, I think. Yes. Or are we going to add this piece? Oh dear. Yes. All right. Here comes the funny part. Funny to some, but you know, this is where my mistake came in. Oh my, you get all this down and you make one mistake, that is going to be it. And I'll show it to you in a minute. So to make this look more effective like glass, I'm adding the Pico embellisher just to these mountain shapes, the light shapes. And that's why I waited until the underneath uh, Copic C2 dried so I could see what shade it was when it was dry. And then I just added one more shade uh, darker to the corners of each pane and that made it look to me a little more realistic like you were looking out of glass. Oh yes, a happy mistake is coming up. We all have them and we have to correct them so you might as well just have a plan and carry on. I really did not get upset over this. Disappointed but not that upset. I knew I could fix it up, believe it or not. It's happened to me many a time where you take your stamp set. I needed to have that uh, cushion underneath because if you stamp on a flat surface, this is sometimes what you can come up with. And I thought, okay, now what do I do? You can't go over it because you'll just end up ghosting it if you try to go over top. Um, I should have had that uh, cushion to help it. But anyway, you know what? Hindsight is 2020, right? Yeah, get your head out there, Carol. So um, 
I have in my stash some green vellum. The perfect color. Oh yeah, everybody can have a good laugh. I had a good laugh. I was talking to my friend and she'll tell you. She's there. Oh, look! And I said, it's just repairing. It's just a happy mistake. I said, we're just going to repair it. There's always, where there's a will, there's a way, right? I find the best way to repair something that is missing letters in that is to stamp it on vellum because you can see through the vellum. This uh, really, um, that's why I have all colored vellum. <laughs> yeah, you have clear vellum and colored vellum for uh, happy mistakes like this. It will really pull you through. And I buy my vellum at, uh, other than the Stampin' Up Clear, I buy my colored vellum. <laughs> Aren't these so cute? I had to add them. Such a sweet little element because this is a happy mistake. So you match your vellum with the card, the backdrop of your card. This way you get to shift your sentiment. I stamped it on the vellum. I put clear embossing powder on it so it wouldn't smudge. And then all I have to do is situate it perfectly over top of my mistake. And you're never going to know that I stamped it wrong. Isn't it funny that I put a cushion underneath it now? <laughs> I'm resting it on that pink cushion. But anyway, if I had had that, it really would have saved the day, I think. You never know. You take your chance right when you go to stamp anything on an image that's almost complete. That is really funny. So I took a Stampin' Up! punch. I wanted to just have enough vellum. Didn't want to overpower the card because it is next to a window and look at that. I tell you what a blessing. I was happy. Come on, bring those happy smiles on. I was so pleased that it turned out. Vellum always saves my day when it comes to messing up sentiments because you can stamp it, put it over top of the mistake stamp, smudges, whatever, and if it's not too uh, smudgy, then it will go on top. Just, just glide it over like that. I have two glue dots on the center words there and just... Yes, it just made me want to take flight. I am telling you, I was so crazy happy that it looked pleasing. I didn't say that this was a fast, clean, and simple card, right? <laughs> oh my, isn't this something? I love uh, creating, don't you? It does, no matter how long or whatever, uh, it just makes you happy to create cards, and um, I'm having a good time here. So, um, even in the edit. So, you just want to situate them so you see that background of uh, green, and then you want to add some real sticky double sided not, yeah, double sided tape to put down our image. And this tape is sticky. You know, this tape I got at Walmart, or no, yeah, Walmart. It's the stickiest tape ever, and it cost me a dollar nine, I think, or something like that. And now I'm going to situate my uh, little scene on the inside, and then I'm going to take a look at it just to make sure I'm happy with it when I close the um, page there. And now we're going to work on the cover. I grabbed the oxide pistachio ink, going over it lightly. Be careful. Be careful when you go over the curves here if you end up doing something like this. I was just mindful. And I didn't want to put any um, flicks of grass blades on there because I wanted the center to stand out. I took some water, sprayed it with my distress sprayer, and pat it down with some paper towels. On a cut or stamp out two round discs, I couldn't find my little half inch punch so I just cut them out and you want one you just want them round enough to fit behind there you uh, put your little disc that you buy extra with the stand with the die set and you put a little bit of glue on there I'm using the tulip glue you set your disc then you put that other round piece you just cut out or punched out if you have the punch that I have but couldn't find. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and I'm taking, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, later on in the evening I'm having a Coca-Cola. Yes, first I started out with one in a glass and now I'm going straight to the can. <laughs> yes, so then take that off, Carol, take it off. You want disc, the round cutout, then you want the disc, then you want the round cutout, and then put your image on that, obviously. It'd be like having a coin it, but instead you use the paper to cut it out something nice and thick and round once it's dry you can pick it up and then to make sure it goes back and forth and back and forth I add baby powder and I have it in this little jar and I just rub it on there front and back and now it will spin back and forth so easy easy peasy so that's something to remember I keep my long sewing pins stuck in there. I have tape over top of the holes and um, then I just stick the pins in. It keeps them nice and slippery when I'm sewing. Um, so now double-sided tape and what you have to remember here, keep it away from that round disc so that it can, you know, that it can roll back and forth. That's the only thing and then you're ready to put it down on the acetate. Yes. But remember that piece I said to save that you die cut out the, the background to that uh, actual die cut? Yes, I had to take a little piece off there. It was too close to the spinner. So you want to put that on the acetate. Situate it so when you look through, you don't see white cardstock. You see the piece that actually die cut out of the runner. So now I'm going around the edges here because I'm going to end up putting the acetate on here. So it's just double-sided. Any double-sided tape you have, your ATG, whatever. I'm going to stick this down so it's e even on each side. And my little mouse is going back and forth. Oh yeah, it is cute as can be. Just testing it here to make sure that it is rolling back and forth. Remembering you want to have it double. I forgot to say this. I doubled up on the double-sided tape. You want it to be high enough that that uh, rolls back and forth, right? So now I'm taking some double-sided tape for around the acetate to go on the back first. So this will go on your card so it's a nice shine when you look through. And then I put double-sided tape and again double-sided tape. Put some double-sided tape on that piece that came out of the die cut. Added another little teensy flower and uh, put some little leaves on it so that when he rolled back, it would look like he had two flowers instead of one. <laughs> Those little things we think of, right? And then you just have to slide it under and manipulate it there till you get it right. And that way it looks like grass from behind. It only took me a few times. And we're heading to the finish line, my friends. Guess what? More cardstock. You know I have to have my cards super thick. So I added a nice piece of white to the back underneath the friend right there. Just cut it off. And I added another piece to the inside. And that made it nice and sturdy when I mail it. As always, I want to thank you ahead of time for your beautiful comments for the time that you take out of your day to view my tutorials. I do appreciate that. And I pray also that you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on the next tutorial. Look at that, isn't that cute the way he goes back and forth? And I hope you found some inspiration with the techniques as well. Um, I try to include as many as I can. So take care my friends, see you on the next tutorial.